Hello, Brawler Net. Welcome to Brawl Theory, the show where brawl nerds like myself dive into the lore behind Brawl Stars because nobody seems to be asking the really important questions. <laughs> This voice kind of hurts. Okay, seriously though, what is up with this sock? It's now on top of the Brawl Ball Stadium and in the Brawl Pass. Okay, well maybe I shouldn't say that nobody is asking the important questions because today's video is actually heavily inspired by Gamba, who made a post about this on Reddit. But we're gonna take it to a whole other level, which is gonna change the way you view Brawl Stars forever. We're talking about the truth behind Brawl Stars. What this sock actually is, who are all of the brawlers and what is their purpose, why it does Spike not have a voice? What can we expect in future Brawl Stars updates? And what is Brawl Stars' actual theme and how would an updated map fit with that theme. We're going to start right there, but then we're going to come back to answer all of those questions later on in this video. Many of you know that in the beginning, Brawl Stars originally had a space theme to it, and that was later replaced with an old Western theme back when the game was in beta. As time went on, Brawl Stars expanded to include much more than just one theme. We now have a giant Brawl Ball stadium, a pirate ship, a haunted town, a mystic bazaar, an arcade, and a whole lot more. In fact, as more time goes on, it seems like Brawl Stars' theme becomes more convoluted and confusing than it used to be. Well, maybe to most people, but I'm just not anyone. I'm the Brawl Guy. And I've had a hunch for a long time regarding what Brawl Stars' actual theme is. You see, over a year ago, when Brawl Stars received the Retropolis update, Apple did an interview with Frank surrounding the update. In this interview, Frank said, when you launch the game and wonder where each character hails from, you might have missed a clue. The silhouette of a big Ferris wheel is visible at the bottom right of the game launch sequence, a hint that the game's environment is is arranged much like a theme park with different sections. Now, when I first read that, I assumed that that meant that there were various lands with all of their own different types of environments that the brawlers came from, and that led to my brawl theory of the Brawl Stars map. But as more time has progressed, Brawl Stars has put more and more hints into the game that suggest that Brawl Stars isn't just different environments arranged like a theme park, but that Brawl Stars is a theme park. And I'm not only going to prove it to you, I'm also going to tell you what this tells us about the brawlers and what we can expect from future Brawl Stars updates. And of course, I'm gonna show you an updated version of the map of Brawl Stars land. Let's start off with the number one reason people come to theme parks, rides and attractions. Do you like bumper cars? Well, why don't you head over to Retropolis and get in line for the bump box? Yes, those are actual bumper cars with bumpers to protect the bumper cars from bumping into each other. It is a bumper car ride. Oh, but what's that you say? You say that you prefer roller coasters? Well, why don't you head over to the Gem Mine and ride the Dyna Coaster? Here's an example of Dynamite riding it himself. More of a water ride kind of person? Then head down to Brawloween Town and get in line for the boat ride. You'll see this loading dock where up to four boats can be loaded at the same time. And if you're a big spender, you can even rent one of Mortis's jet skis. I know it doesn't look like much when it's not moving, but here's a clip of Mortis riding one. But if you prefer, you can actually head over to Daryl's ship because the entire thing is a boat ride. Make sure you keep your hands and feet within the ride at all times though. Otherwise, you might get thrown overboard by some mechanical tentacles and no kids, the plank is not part of the ride. Let's say you're in one part of the park and then you want to go to another part of the park. Well, you and your entire family can ride the monorail that takes you right through the arcade and other scenic areas of Brawl Stars land. Other attractions include a haunted house called Mortis's Mortuary, Mr. Bat's home run for guests to test their skill in the batting cages, the flying mattress, which is basically like a merry-go-round where you just lie down, and if you want, you can even pay to get your fortune told in Terra's Bazaar. Don't worry though, Brawl Stars has other things for you to do if you're not into rides. They've got a whole place that includes 8-Bits Arcade, Brock's Video Arcade, Rico's Bounce House for younger kids, and even Pinball. Once construction is finished in the Wild West part of the theme park, Brawl Stars will will even have a shiny new Ferris wheel for those who aren't afraid of heights. Up next is the second reason people come to parks, novelty foods and merchandise. If you like Asian foods, I recommend you go to the arcade area, which is Asian city themed. You can get Japanese sushi here, Korean bibimbap here, and Chinese Zhao Long Bao here. Older park guests might even make their way to Brawl Street where they'll find Barley's Bar for novelty drinks. But for most park goers, I would recommend heading to Retropolis where they've got burgers at Burger Brawl, all sorts of crazy soft drinks drinks at Gulp and anything else you could possibly want at Bull's Diner. They're even open for private birthday parties. And of course, while you're waiting to digest your food a bit before hitting more rides, you're definitely going to want to stop 
stop by some of the shops to get some of that novelty merchandise. I highly recommend starting out at the gift shop by Barley's Bar, but you can also go to Jeans Lamporium for some of their latest merch. And what kind of merchandise do they sell? Spike socks. Finally, we have an answer, and I'm gonna even talk more about why Spike is such an important character in Brawl Stars Land later in this video. You can also buy eagle hats. As you can see, this is not a headdress. It's actually a cap, and you can adjust the size to fit either kids or adults. They also offer chameleon hoodies that include a curled up tail. Wait, what's that? You like bears? Well, that's perfect because they also have stuffed teddy bears. This one's name is Bruce. They also have these super cool bear hats. I mean, bear hats are way cooler than a mouse hat. <laughs> Am I right? Goodbye, Mickey. Hello, Bruce. Believe me, guys, all the other park guests are going to be super jealous when they see you walking around the park with one of these bad boys on your head. Speaking of mouse ears, I mean Mickey ears, I mean Brawl Stars merchandise. Brawl Stars Land recently got a stock of new Star Crown hats with the addition of Terra's Bazaar. You might have seen them lying around in the park in various locations. In fact, there's at least one in every different area of the park. Arcade Mania, the Brawl Ball Stadium, Brawl Beach, Brawl Island, Brawl Street, Brawloween Town, Daryl's Ship, Gem Mountain, Retropolis, Terra's Bazaar, and even the Wild West. Wait a second, you're telling me you saw a whole box of them while you were playing Siege? That can't be right. That's the park storage facility and guests are not allowed in there. Didn't you see the giant gate and security cameras everywhere? That's a private spot in the park where Jesse, Pam, and Nani do maintenance on and create new animatronics to entertain the guests. Why else would there be giant warehouses for storage, guys? Now, if you don't believe me that Brawl Stars is a theme park, we're about to go over a whole lot more evidence. You'll see various themed trash cans throughout Brawl Stars, much like Disney has themed trash cans throughout their theme parks. You'll also notice there are parts on the maps that are roped off, signifying that guests are not allowed to go to certain places or touch certain props. There are exit signs in Brawloween Town and the Gem Mine to show guests how to get out of certain attractions. This water ride and Dynamite's roller coaster have protective restraints to keep guests from getting out of the ride until it's over, just like you would normally see on a ride in any time. Type of theme park. In the Brawl Street area, there's actually a place for you to mail postcards to show that your friends and family that you're thinking of them while you're having a good time. And there's even a place to get your hair cut, which isn't too far-fetched for a theme park to do. In fact, Disney World has a place called Harmony's Barbershop in the entrance to their theme park as well. Here's a vending machine for guests to get drinks without having to wait in line. Mortis's Mortuary clearly has ropes that are used to form a queue for guests, and it is clear that the ride costs three tickets to enter. By the way, it costs tickets to ride the rides. How do you buy tickets? With gold coins, of course. What do you earn if you do well at the arcade? Tokens. What can you do with tokens? Buy brawl boxes. What are inside brawl boxes? Food and drinks. That's why the developers changed them to look less like safes in the beta to looking like lunch boxes in the global release. Brawl Stars is a theme park. But hey, that's just a theory. <laughs> That really hurts, by the way. <laughs> also, I think it's more than just a theory. I think that when Frank said that Brawl Stars was organized like a theme park, that was the biggest hint that Brawl Stars is a theme park. And that leaves us with a lot of big hints when it comes to the kinds of things that we'll be getting in the future for Brawl Stars updates. But before we cover that, we still need to talk about what this reveals about who the brawlers are and what their purpose is. I think that most all of the brawlers in Brawl Stars have some sort of job to do in the park. I already mentioned that Jesse, Nani, and Pam are in charge of building animatronic robots to entertain and take care of the guests. Barley serves drinks, Daryl and Tick ride the giant ship ride, Sprout along with Rosa and Bee are in charge of growing and taking care of all the plant life in the park, Rico and 8-Bit help out at the arcade, and Carl is likely there to help out with Dynamite's roller coaster. I think that Poco is in charge of live music and he actually hired DJ Frank to put on a show every now and then, and the Mystic Trio obviously runs things at Terra's Bazaar. Bull is secretly a really good chef at his diner, Jackie is one of the construction workers in charge of building new attractions, but one brawler that I thought a lot about is Spike. Where does he come from? Why are his socks so important? And why does he not have a voice? I actually got my biggest hint regarding who Spike is from Mr. P. You see, Mr. P has a zipper on the back of his head along with some stitching, which would actually suggest that he's just wearing a costume, a nice penguin costume, right? You'll also notice similar stitching on the back of El Primo's mask. This is actually pretty similar to what you might see at Disneyland. I'm talking about the guy in the big mouse costume. That's right, guys. El Primo and Mr. P might be a little bit more like Mickey Mouse than you might have thought. But while Mr. P is wearing a costume and sounds a lot like Gene, who well, actually might just be Gene underneath the costume, Spike has no voice. Why not? For the very same reason that Mickey Mouse, who walks around the park to greet guests, does 
not have a voice at Disneyland. It's so that anybody that's the right height can put on the cactus suit and be Spike without Spike's voice ever changing. That's right, guys. Spike is essentially the Mickey Mouse of Brawl Stars land. And that is why his socks are so important. They are merchandise that people buy because they just love Brawl Stars land so much. As a side note, I actually think that Crow might also be a good fit for this same role, but his zipper is probably hidden in the neck of his jacket. But Crow does still need to remodel, so we have to wait and see how Brawl Stars actually ties Crow into the whole theme. Now, I don't think that all of the brawlers are park workers. I think that there's a family that just goes to the park and is just there to enjoy it. Namely, Bo is the father, Nita and Leon as brother and sister. I mentioned their headgear earlier, and it's my theory that they are at Brawl Stars Land to ride the rides and play at the arcade. They're just so excited about it that they're out there wearing their favorite merchandise. Bo with his dad cap, Nita with her bear hat, and Leon with his chameleon hoodie. Now, why are the brawlers all out there fighting each other? I'm not entirely certain, but it might be some sort of way to keep them entertained while the park is closed, or they might just be out there trying to entertain the guests. After all, that might be why there's a giant brawl ball stadium in the middle of the park. Park. Maybe the rides and the food are only side attractions and people come to the park primarily to watch some of their favorite characters play various games each other. But of course, we're gonna have to say that for another time. Because now it is time for us to talk about what this means for the future of Brawl Stars. What kind of updates will we see in the future? First of all, there's one thing that is missing from Brawl Stars Land and that is a place for guests to sleep. If you go to any Disney park, there will be several Disney themed hotels surrounding the park. There's one in particular that gets me thinking about Brawl Stars and that is the Mickey Mouse Penthouse. This hotel is themed after Mickey Mouse, and it's only a matter of time before I think we're going to get a Brawl Stars version. But rather than the Mickey Mouse Hotel, it's going to be Mr. P's Hotel. We learned from the last Brawl Talk that Gail works at Mr. P's Hotel, and Mr. P's entire theme is surrounding a hotel. He summons porters. Porters are typically people that work at hotels to carry luggage, just like bellhops do. So what does Gail do? Well, some people might think that Gail's job is to clear the snow, but Gail's machine does not blow snow away. If it did that, it would just be blowing air. Gale's machine creates snow. Gale is using a snow machine. You take a snow machine and a penguin suit for Mr. P and that tells me that we are going to be getting some type of a winter themed environment in a future update. And there will likely be Mr. P's hotel off to the side, probably actually at the top of the arena. The hotel is run by Mr. P and Gale's whole job is to create snow to keep the environment winter themed. As a side note, I think it's very likely that we'll be getting a third brawler that's going to fit their snowy trio as well. He's likely either going to be a worker at the hotel or he might actually be some type of an ice themed brawler, maybe like a snowman. But that's not the only prediction I'm going to make. I think that it is very likely that the Wild West theme that we currently have is probably going to get remodeled into something that fits a theme park a little bit more. I think it's going to have a sheriff's office for Colton Shelley, and I think there's a good chance that this Ferris wheel on the original Brawl Stars loading screen will actually be put into the game somewhere in the Wild West theme. I think that we'll get more brawlers like Bo, Leon, and Nita who will wear more themed merchandise, but actually won't be workers of the park. And I think that there's a good chance that we'll get some type of a superhero theme or a space theme to fit Max along with a couple other superhero brawlers. And just like some popular villains also walk around Disney parks, I also would not be surprised at all if the developers made an evil villain trio to complete the park. Now, a while ago, we had a jungle temple themed area that mostly took place in Bounty, and as time has gone by, the developers have actually removed it from the game. I think they're going to bring some type of a greenhouse environment back into the game to fit the jungle brawlers like Rosa, Sprout, and Bee. And with all that, it is time for me to reveal an updated version of the Brawl Stars theme park. By the way, this was created by JY Jackie, who creates some amazing Brawl Stars fan art. So you should definitely check out his Instagram, which I'll link below. First up, we have the entrance to the park where you will actually notice the top half of the Brawl Stars star shaped just like the golden crown hats that are around the theme park. To the right is the arcade area with the monorail passing to drop guests off at the front of the park from the parking lot. Going up from there, you enter into Brawloween Town where DJ Frank does live music and you can enter into Mortis's Mortuary. To the right of that, you'll notice a very important message from today's sponsor. K-A-I R-O-S, Code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. Now above the Code Kairos sign, you will see a giant Brawl Ball Stadium where the World Cup is held. And to the left is Retropolis where Bull's Diner is. Up and to the right is the storage facility where maintenance on bots occurs, but park guests are not actually allowed to go up there. Hence all the security cameras. And to the left of that is the gem mine with Dynamite's Dyna Coaster. Down to the left is the Wild West area, which I think will be remodeled to have a sheriff's office, as well as the Ferris wheel on the original loading screen. And below that is Rosa's and Bee's greenhouse, 
where they'll take care of all the park's greenery. To the right of that is the center of the park, which is what I like to call Brawl Street, and that's where Barley's Bar is. And down to the left is an area that I think will eventually be a winter-themed environment added into Brawl Stars, including Mr. P's Hotel and a snowy ice igloo. If you head to the left, you'll find Daryl's Boat Ride, which will take you down to an exclusive Brawl Ball Island. And last but not least, you can follow the beach up to the upper left where you will find a giant robo spike coming out of the sand, just like the real one that was put in Busan, South Korea for the 2019 Brawl Stars World Championship. And that is an updated version of the Brawl Stars map as a theme park built to entertain guests and bring smiles to park goers. Some even call it the happiest place on earth. But hey, that's just a theory, a brawl theory. Thanks for watching.